Today, we will learn about the lie, a propaganda technique we briefly touched upon in episode 2. When repeating a claim over and over again, people are more likely to believe that the claim is true, even if it is not. This technique is known as the lie. The lie is an essential tool of propaganda. It is a false statement made by advertisers, political leaders, and governments with the intent to deceive. It is a powerful weapon used to create a desired image and to manipulate and control people. In 1869, Isa Blagden wrote, If a lie is only printed often enough, it becomes a quasi-truth, and if such a truth is repeated often enough, it becomes an article of belief, a dogma, and men will die for it. Since then, the quote has since been streamlined. Perhaps the best variation is, A lie told often enough becomes the truth. Has been attributed to both Vladimir Lenin, founder of the Russian Communist Party, and Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister. However, the actual source has yet to be confirmed. According to Resnick, Stafford, Tilton, and others, phrases like these are known as the illusory truth effect in cognitive psychology, also known as ITE. Simply put, ITE is the tendency to believe false information is true after repeated exposure. For example, following World War I, the Nazi government used it claiming that the Jews were responsible for Germany's defeat and were plotting to take over the world. These claims were entirely false. They reiterated this message repeatedly in their speeches, newspapers, films, posters, and books. As a result, many Germans came to believe Jews were inferior to other races, not unlike the use of the racist and woke movement in today's environment. The German children's book, Der Giftpilz by Ernst Hemer, known in English as the Poison Mushroom, is a prime example of repeating the anti-Semitic message. Each of the 17 short stories starts with an illustration. The first illustration is of a boy handing a poison mushroom to his mother, who proclaims, It is often hard to distinguish poison mushrooms from good mushrooms. Thus, it is often very hard to recognize the Jews as crooks and villains. Another element of ITE is when confronted with the truth, the person or group will deny it by repeating the falsehood. For example, in 2019, reporter Peter Ducey asked then-presidential candidate Joe Biden about his being in business with his son, and Biden denied it. Have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. More than a year later, weeks before the U.S. 2020 election, on October 14, 2020, the New York Post reported overwhelming evidence that the president's son, Hunter, forgot he left his laptop at a repair shop containing damaging information he and his father were in business together making millions of dollars, and the FBI had the laptop. During President Joseph Biden's inaugural address on January 20, 2021, he proclaimed, There is truth and there are lies. Lies told for power and for profit. And each of us has a duty and a responsibility as citizens, as Americans, and especially as leaders, leaders who have pledged to honor our Constitution and protect our nation, to defend the truth and defeat the lies. Look, I understand. The illusory truth effect can contain half-truths, which are technically true and misleading because it omits important information or context. As a result, people exposed to these half-truths may be more likely to believe them, even if they are not true. For example, marijuana is a gateway drug. This statement is a half-truth because it is true that some people who use marijuana go on to use other harder drugs. However, most people who use marijuana do not go on to use other drugs. The illusory truth effect can also use deflection to divert attention away from the truth. This is done by redirecting the focus to a different issue, often less harmful or relevant. Methods used to deflect are, changing the subject is where they change the subject to something else, often something that is less controversial or less important. Attacking the accuser is challenging the lie rather than addressing the lie itself. This can be done by calling the person names, questioning their motives, or suggesting that they are not qualified to make the criticism. Making excuses for the lie is blaming someone else, claiming that the lie is not as bad as it seems, or denying that it even exists. 
Deflection is a powerful propaganda technique because it can be used to avoid dealing with the lie, negative issues, or criticism and can be effective in persuading people to ignore or forget about the lie and view it in a more favorable light. For example, earlier, we viewed Joe Biden's response to Peter Ducey's question. After thinking for a moment, Biden continued with a classic deflection response. I have never spoken to my son about the government system. And so here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. Another deflection example used by Biden to deflect attention from his growing scandal was to have his Justice Department file indictments for his primary political challenger the day after negative news was released that further implicated his involvement with his son. Now, the timing of this indictment was coordinated to take the heat off Biden. This is the third time this has happened. You ready? On March 17th, Hunter admitted the laptop was his. And on the very next day, Trump received word Alvin Bragg was indicting him in New York. On June 8th, an FBI document broke that Ukraine paid Biden a $5 million bribe. And the next day, on June 9th, Biden's DOJ indicts Trump on the Mar-a-Lago documents. Yesterday, on July 31st, a Biden insider told Congress that Biden spoke with Hunter Biden's business partners dozens of times. And Hunter was paid handsomely to get his dad to fire the prosecutor in Ukraine. And then today, August 1st, Biden's Justice Department indicts Trump on January 6th charges. This isn't a coincidence. Any time Biden's in trouble, Trump pays for it. And the news cycle flips. The illusory truth effect can also spread false narratives known as fake news. In recent years, false narratives have been appearing on social media because it makes sharing information quick and easy. As a result, false information can be spread to a large number of people in a short amount of time. Those receiving the fake information do not take time to research before retweeting or reposting the falsity. For example, on August 4, 2023, a social media influencer posted a video on his Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter accounts announcing that he would give away free PlayStation 5 consoles and $100 gift cards at Union Square Park in New York City at 4 p.m. The post quickly went viral, and by the time the giveaway was scheduled to start, a crowd of thousands had gathered in the park and became unruly, causing a riot. His post created a false expectation among his followers, who were led to believe they would be guaranteed a free PlayStation 5 console if they showed up at Union Square Park. Here are some things we can do to defend the truth. Be informed. The more we know about the world, the better equipped we are to spot lies. Be critical. Don't just believe everything you hear or read. Ask questions and do your research. Be open-minded. Just because something doesn't fit our worldview doesn't mean it's untrue. Be courageous. It takes courage to stand up for what we believe in, even when it's unpopular. We need to defend the truth, not just for ourselves, but for our children and grandchildren. They deserve to live in a world without propaganda, where they can trust the information they receive and make informed decisions about their lives. Until next time, make it a goal to learn something new daily.